Welcome back to the Scottabite channel and this is Scott. So Apache Guacamole is a powerful clientless gateway for remote systems access and I last covered it in September of 2021. Apache embeds access to your systems via a web page. Apache supports SSH, RDP, VNC, and Telnet. Connection traffic is protected with SSL. Connection to Guacamole hosted systems provides access to selected systems rather than to an entire network as with the VPN. Guacamole supports two-factor authentication through time-based one-time passwords. Guacamole also supports 2FA via Cisco's Duo, but I'm really hoping for open support FIDO hardware key support, like support with the Yubico key. And I noticed recently that there's been a lot of discussion out on the Apache Guacamole forums that that probably is coming fairly soon. So since Guacamole grants access to systems inside your network, 2FA is an important form of security. So here we are at my Apache Guacamole login. And I wanna be clear that Apache Guacamole is basically a clientless gateway, as I said. So what that means is it means that protocols like SSH, where you normally access a system through a terminal, or RDP, where you use some sort of an RDP client, are not required. Instead, it embeds access to those systems via a web page. And the advantage to it is that web page can be accessed from anywhere without a VPN. So in my case, guacamole.scottabyte.com is the address for my guacamole. And I could gain access to any of the systems hosted through my guacamole uh, via the login credentials and I could access it basically from anywhere. So in this particular case, I am logging in with my Bitwarden and my guacamole with a uh, long complex password and then it's asking for my time-based one-time password authentication key and I'm getting that from Bitwarden as well and then I'm continuing to my login. So the login screen, um, <clears throat> in my case, my configuration, I've got quite a few systems. If we look under GUI systems as an example, I have uh, a uh, several GUI systems here. Uh, one of them, for example, is a Windows 11 system. If I click on it, it'll say connected to Guacamole, waiting for response. And here you see in a web page, it is firing up my RDP connection to my Windows system. And furthermore, for a really good experience, you can go down to your web browser and make your web browser full screen, at which point it really appears that I have a completely local access to my system. So <clears throat> we can log back out of this again with logging out of Windows the way you normally would. And I can bump against the top of my screen and exit the full screen mode. And when it exits Windows, it will ask me if I want to reconnect to that system, if I want to log out, or if I want to go back to the Guacamole home screen. Another example usage might be when I access an SSH terminal, and I have a group here called Terminals that has quite a few of my systems defined on it. So let's go to my authentic system, which I covered in a recent video, but in this case, it's going to an SSH session inside of my authentic instance. And you see how logging in was really quick with that, just like it was with Windows. We can go full screen on my web browser again if desired. And here my SSH terminal is full screen. I bump against the top of the screen and I exit full screen mode and I can exit out of my 
SSH terminal session in Guacamole and it will come back and ask me again if I want to reconnect, log out, or go back to the home screen for Apache Guacamole. In regards to security on Apache Guacamole, you've already seen that I logged in with a complex username, password, and two-factor authentication time-based one-time password key. In addition to that, you can see there's a lock at the top of the screen. When I click on it and go to connection is secure and go to certificate is valid, you'll see that I have a Let's Encrypt uh, certificate in virtue of the fact that Guacamole is being front-ended by my Nginx proxy manager and we're going to review how I did that in this tutorial. When I last covered Apache Guacamole in September of 2021, I installed the application directly into a LexD container. This time we're going to do something a little bit different in that we're going to install a LexD container, but we're going to nest a Docker container inside of it. And if you want to know why I tend to do that, it's because I like the aspect of having a dedicated IP address for the LexD container into which the Docker application is installed. So in this particular case, I'm launching an Ubuntu 2204 instance. I'm calling it Guacamole. I'm giving it the default profile. And if you've watched my video on LexD containers before entitled LexD Containers 101, we learned about the bridge profile which we create so I'm creating that same bridge profile or I'm using that same bridge profile, setting security.nesting equal to true because that's required to nest Docker containers inside of the LexD container. And then boot.autostart equals to true means that when the LexD host boots, the Docker container or the, um, when the LexD host boots, I should say, the LexD container starts automatically. So after about 30 seconds, we do a LexC list, and I can see that I have the local address of 172.16.1.152, which is in fact an address on my main LAN. So I'm going to do a LexC exec on guacamole and enter the Bosch shell. And as you know, LexD containers do not by default automatically have a user account. So I'll do an add user on Scott, create myself a user account with a password. And I'm gonna go ahead and grant that user account pseudo privilege with a user mod dash A capital G pseudo Scott. And then it's usually really good when you first create a container to do an apt update ampersand ampersand apt upgrade to make sure that the repositories are upgraded and all of the pending updates are also installed. So we'll do that here. Next, we want to install Docker using the script from the Docker website. And now we also want to install Docker Compose with an apt install docker-compose. Let's put the Scott account in the Docker group with the user mod dash A capital G Docker Scott. I like to install net dash tools. So apt install net dash tools. And we do an install on open SSH server with an apt install open SSH dash server. I'm going to exit out of my console, but first I'm going to do an if config 
and you can see there is the address of 172.16.1.152. This is the same address that we saw when we did the Lexi list. So I'm going to exit out of it, go back to my local machine and do an SSH over to that address. I'm going to accept the fingerprint and type in the password. Now that I'm logged into my new guacamole instance, I'm going to use this git clone command, which will be in the show notes, to bring down the installation into my local system. If we do an ls, you can see I have a guacamole folder. I'm going to cd into the guacamole folder. We can list the contents of the guacamole directory here by doing an ls and we want to do a dot slash prepare dot sh to run that prepare script and it will download a docker container and this is basically initializing the database that will be required for the guacamole installation the next step is we want to go ahead and edit the docker compose file with the nano docker-compose.yml. If we move down here past all of the comments, as we get into the Postgres database section, you're going to see something that says choose your own password here, and you want to choose a fairly unguessable password for your database. I usually like to use something like Bitwarden to come up with the password, but here I'll just go ahead and type in a bunch of characters. Now it's important to take whatever you set as your password here and to copy that. And then we want to move down further in the file to the guacamole section where the Postgres, pa Postgres password appears again and we want to paste a copy of it that is identical to what you saw above. Now the next step that we have here is we want to go ahead and add a couple of environment variables to the guacamole section. And one of the environment variables that we want is TOTP under bar enabled. And we want to go ahead and set it equal to true. And the next one that we want is the web app under bar context. And we want it to be set equal to root. Now we want to move down a few more lines and there's a couple of commented sections. This first commented one says enable the next line if not using nginx. And that does not mean the Nginx proxy manager, it means the Nginx uh, web server, and we're not going to use that. So we'll pull these two comments out, and then we'll go ahead and comment the next fields, which are for Nginx. And although this says here that guacamole is not on port 8080 forward slash guacamole, it's not on root. In virtue of the fact that we said web context is root, ours is on root. So go ahead and pick this uh, optional section here and do a whole series of control Ks to eliminate having to load the container for the Nginx web server. Then we do a control O to output our docker compose.yaml file. We hit enter and a control X to exit the nano editor. Now we do a docker space compose space up dash D to go ahead and launch the guacamole application. You'll notice it's pulling down the Postgres container and the guacamole container and starting them as well as starting a network configuration. Up at our web browser, we go to my address, which is 172.16.1.152 colon 8080, and that should take us to our guacamole instance. 
Now we have a username and a password prompt. The initial username is going to be guac admin and the initial password is going to be guac admin. When we hit login, we're going to get this multi-factor authentication up here and it's going to ask us if we want to go ahead and create an entry for it. I'm going to go ahead and say um, show the code and I'm going to go ahead and pick this particular code here, the secret key, which you should not divulge to anybody because it will give you them access to your TOTP. So then I'm going to go ahead and pick this guac admin entry I have here. I'm going to edit it and I'm going to put my TOTP key seed into this and I'm going to go ahead and click save and then I can see my TOTP verification code cutting, uh, counting down. It gets down and now it's at 30 seconds so I copy it and I go ahead and paste it into this field and when I paste it in I can do a continue. So now if I log off of Guac Admin and I go log back on again, I can simply go up to my Bitwarden and I can type in the option. It enters Guac Admin as the username and Guac Admin as the password. I click Login. It's giving me my 2FA prompt. I copy my 2FA key and I go ahead and paste it in here and say Continue and it logs me in. Now that we're logged in, one of the first things we want to do is create ourselves another account. So I'm going to click up here on Guac Admin, go to Settings. On Settings, I'll go over to Users, and I'm going to go ahead and add a new user. And the new user I'm going to add will be Scott. And then I'm going to type in a password for Scott and re-enter that password for Scott. And then I'm going to say clear the TOTP secret, even though there isn't one yet now. And then I'm going to go ahead and come down here and say I want Scott to be able to administer the system, create new users, create new groups, create new connections, create new connection groups, create new sharing profiles, and finally change my own password. And I'll click save. So now I basically have a new admin account. I'll go ahead and log out of this and I'll go ahead and type in Scott and then I'll type in my password. And then it gives me the two-factor authentication again and I'm going to go ahead and do a show on that. And now this is going to be the key for the Scott account which I'm using to really overwrite my Guac admin entry here. So I'm clicking on this one. I'm going to do an edit in my Bitwarden. I'm putting in my new authenticator key into Bitwarden. I'm saying save. And now I'm copying this password. And I put the one-time password down here to verify it. And it goes ahead and logs me in. So now... At this point, I'm going to go over to Settings, go over to Users, and I'm clicking on Guac Admin, and I'm going to delete the Guac Admin account. And now all I have out here is the Scott account. And likewise, in my Bitwarden, I could go out here and pick my Guac Admin entry and delete it. So now basically all I have is the entry for the Scott account. Now I can log out of this, say re-login. I can use my Bitwarden to log in. It's going to put my Scott and my password. I can go ahead and say login and I can go ahead and specify the 2FA key and say continue and it logs me in. So when you first log in to Guacamole, you're going to see this section saying recent connections and all connections. In order to define a connection, though, you need to click on your username and go down to Settings. Once you're in Settings, you can go over to Connections, and you can either create a new group or new connection. So I like to create a new group, and I like to call my group something like Terminals. You can create it whatever you want, and I click Save, and now I have a Terminals group. 
I can open the terminals group and I can say I want to create a connection inside of terminals and I'll go ahead and say I want a connection for guac is what I'm going to say. Let's just say guacamole. And then if I scroll down here, come down to host name, I'm going to want to enter the address. So it's going to be 172.16.1.152. Or you can use the DNS name if you have DNS enabled. I'm going to go up here and say, I want my protocol to be SSH. We're going to use Guacamole to connect to the LexD instance that we created Guacamole on. So we're going to use Guacamole to get to Guacamole, if that makes any sense. So the host port is going to be 172.16.1.152 for the host address. And the host port name or port number is going to be 22. And then the authentication is where I'm going to put in my username. And then I'm going to type in my password. You can also use um, SSH keys if you prefer. And then I'm going to come down here and say, well, in my terminal, I want an interesting color scheme. So I'll just say, hey, why don't we make it uh, white on black? or black and white. Let's make it white out black. And let's go ahead and set our font size up to say 18 character pitch. And then go ahead and say save. Now at this point, I have a definition for guacamole. If I click on it here, it's just gonna go back in and edit it. So really what I wanna do is I wanna come back up here and go to home. When I go to home, I can open terminals and there I have guacamole. And if I click on guacamole, it will connect to the guacamole terminal. So here we have an SSH terminal to my guacamole SSH session, but inside of a web page. And this could be accessed from inside of my network. But the real point of guacamole is we want to configure it to work from outside of our network. To configure Guacamole to work from outside of our network, we're going to assume that you already have a subdomain defined up at your DNS provider and that you already have Nginx Proxy Manager installed. In Nginx Proxy Manager, I go into Proxy Host, I add a host, and my subdomain name that I had previously added was guac.scottabyte com and I'm going to go ahead and type in the forward address for it which is going to be 172.16.1. and our guacamole address as you recall is 152. So we'll type in 152 and recall that our forward port is 8080. I'm going to say block common exploits websocket support is turned on. Go over to SSL, select request a new certificate, and say, I agree to the Let's Encrypt Terms of Service. I really want to come back and say force SSL, but if I turn it on like I did here, it will turn off once the entry is completed. So I'll have to come back and revisit the proxy entry anyway and turn it back on. After a few seconds here, it goes ahead and creates my entry. I scroll down to the guac entry and I say edit. I go over to SSL and again I turn on the force SSL and in this case I'm also going to turn on HTTP to support and click save. At this point I can go to guacamole.scottabyte.com or guac.scottabyte.com and you can see here that I've got my lock and it's saying that my connection is secure. Now I can go in here and uh, find that guac entry, which I don't have um, because it's by address. So it's 172.16.1.152. So I'll go ahead and change this name in my I'll change this to guacamole video, meaning guacamole for the video. 
And then down here, instead of this as the URL, I'm going to enter HTTPS colon slash slash guac dot scottabyte dot com in my Bitwarden. And I'm going to go ahead and say save. So at this point, I'll be able to simply click here and say guacamole, login. It prompts me for my authentication. And I go ahead and click on the clock. And I paste in my one-time password. And there we are. And there are our terminals. So let's go ahead and create a guacamole entry for a Windows system. I come back up here to Scott and I go to settings and I go to connections. And this time I'm going to ask for another new group and I'll go ahead and say GUI just for GUI systems. And I'll say save and you can see there's now a section for GUI and a section for terminals. Guacamole is a terminal. And I'm going to create a new connection for a GUI, and I'm going to call this one Windows 11. And then the protocol will be RDP because that's how we connect to Windows 11. I'm going to come down here to the section for my host name, and my host name is win11-rain because I have DNS enabled on my network. And then I'm going to type in the port, which is going to be 3389, which is the port for RDP, the username, and my password. And then my security mode, I'm just going to leave blank, and I'll say ignore server certificate. And that's going to be required for this RDP up here. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to display width and I'm going to type 1920 by 1080 display height. And then I will go down here under the performance section and I'm going to enable everything except for the switch for uh, enabling uh, the Aero desktop composition. I found these give me pretty good performance. And let me scroll up here and see if there's anything else. No, this looks pretty good. So you see there's a lot of settings here. You can really customize these things. Now if I come back here under GUI, you'll see Windows 11. But if I click on it, we just go back into the editing mode. So to actually use it, we have to go up here to Scott click on home and then I go over to GUI and I click on Windows 11. It says connected to Windows 11 waiting for a response and it fails. So the reason that the connection to the Windows 11 system by using DNS failed was because I did not have DNS correctly set inside of the LexD container and I'll go ahead and put those in the show notes explaining how that is done. So anyway, here I click on my Windows 11 now that my DNS is set up correctly. It says connecting and it connects almost immediately. And just like in the case of the um, SSH session, you can always go up here and click on the menu and go to full screen. And that way you can have a full screen Windows appearance. We can go in here and do things and we have a guacamole connection to a Windows 11 and this particular Windows 11 happens to be a Windows 11 Lex DVM and I have some great videos talking about how to go out and build one of those. So I come over here and I sign out and it comes back to guacamole and I say go back home and I bump against the top of the screen coming out of full screen mode for my web browser. And there we are. We have guacamole connection. Again, since we have the lock and since we are defined through Nginx Proxy Manager, we can get to this from outside my network. And that's why I consider the two-factor authentication with the time-based one-time password key really important. So in summary, 
I have covered Authentic as an additional authentication front end, but only for your websites. Although a VPN can provide global access to your entire network, Guacamole can provide access to only selected systems via protocols such as SSH and RDP. And Guacamole sessions are SSL encrypted. 2FA for Guacamole provides enhanced security. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.